Boom, boom. All right. What's up, guys? What up, what up? Another Monday night here at 212 Performance Gym. Tyler Holt, Eli Schmidt. Boom. Back at you again. We got a Q&A again tonight. Um, we're going to cover a couple topics um, that some people wanted us to cover. We appreciate the feedback. Um, yep, yep. Absolutely. It helps us plan for you guys. So um, we're going to go over uh, cleanses and detoxes, um, some tips for uh, beginners, people starting to get into this um, whole fitness deal, um, alcohol effects on whatever your goal is, weight loss, muscle gain, and then um, good carbs and bad carbs to go along with that. Yep. So, and uh, whatever uh, questions you guys have along the way, feel free to uh, jump in, ask your questions. Uh, this is a live Q&A, so feel free to ask. We like, uh, we like questions on the spot. We don't want to be too scripted or anything like that, so uh, definitely uh, don't hesitate to reach out, whatever your questions may be. What up, Greg? How you doing, bud? Hey, Tim. All right, Tim. You're getting here a little more, buddy. You're not on mine. People oh. want to see your face. I don't know why. There we go. We'll go All right. There. Okay. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> starting off, um, right now uh, we had a client. I had a client reach out to me, and uh, she was curious what our opinion, what our professional opinion is on all the cleanses and detoxes that are out there. Uh, I know there are a lot of programs that are promoting these. Uh, you see them all over Instagram, all over Facebook, uh, people posting their detox and cleanse, you know, how much weight they lost and how crappy they feel or how good they feel or, uh, you know, just whatever extreme thing that they're doing. So um, our professional opinion, um, Tyler, you want to kick this one off, bud? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> the whole deal with cleanses and detox, guys, I am um, will be just blunt here. I'm not a fan of them. Um, your body is designed to cleanse and detox itself. That's what you have those organs for, is to do all that for you. So um, I don't, I mean, in all these, these are all fad diets that come along with these, you know, cleanses and detox and, you know, lose all this weight. Well, the thing is, is yes, a cleanse and a detox is going to help you lose weight immediately. I mean, that's, that's just kind of what it does. You lose a lot of water weight and, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, it helps in that sense. So you might drop, you know, you do a cleanse or a detox, you might drop five, 10 pounds, right. um, which is to be, I guess, expected from a lot of those. But then the bad thing is, is as soon as you're done with that cleanse and detox, that weight goes right back on you because it's not, a, you know, a cleanse and a detox, it's not a lifestyle. It's not a, a way of, um, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's not sustainable. So it's not anything that's going to take weight off you and keep the weight off you at the same time. So if you're trying to rely on a cleanse and detox to lose weight and keep that weight off, it, it, you're, you're going to be upset. Yeah, and, you know, the, the studies out there, guys, don't show any proof that detoxes and cleanses actually work. Um, the only real proof that's out there or why I think, you know, people do do them is because they feel more energy and... Um, Really, I think that comes from a number of things. So basically, when you're not eating food, so a detox, those of you who don't know, typically it involves some sort of fast followed by some sort of uh, program, uh, you know, some weird foods they'll put in there, uh, you know, drinking like just lemon water with like maple syrup or something, right. um, some weird stuff like that, um, or taking uh, some of these products um, during your cleanse, so only like liquid foods. And when you, whenever you guys, and I'm speaking from experience because I do intermittent fasting, um, whenever you are not eating food all day, whenever you're not digesting food, so when you're in a fasted state, um, your body does have more energy, frankly, just because your body isn't using energy to digest all this food, right? So you're going to have more energy just from not eating. Plus, if you are taking in, you know, smoothies or, uh, you know, some more, you know, fruits and vegetables that maybe you haven't been eating, you're probably getting more nutrients and vitamins from those foods that weren't in your diet before. So there's no doubt that you probably do feel increased energy uh, the first couple of days. But here's my suggestion. I think if you are wanting to do some sort of cleanse or detox or something, first of all, that name is just marketing. That's all it is. Um, it, it doesn't actually cleanse. It doesn't actually detox. No studies out there back that up. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I think it's just marketing. But it, in my opinion, it can be a good way to, if you're about to do a complete lifestyle change and introduce a newer type of eating, healthier eating, if you just want to take a day 
and maybe don't eat, you know, half the day and just take in some good alkalized lemon water or something. Um, vinegar would help your body become more alkaline. If you want to take half a day and not eat and just do that, um, sure, go ahead. But don't do that for more than a day, guys. Or I mean, 48 hours absolute max. And also don't do it to lose weight, okay? Use it to kind of uh, get a kickstart on a diet, get some energy back, and then go on a good nutrition plan. But by no means turn to a diet or a cleanse or a detox uh, to lose weight because it's only going to be water weight in the beginning and it's going to come right back whenever you start eating normal food again, even if it's normal healthy food. Um, I mean, right? Yep, absolutely. That's, yeah, yeah, so... You know. There's and you know adding in a lot of these use a lot of the cleanses use ingredients like you know fruits and vegetables. So I mean if you honestly wanted to go get more fruits and vegetables, right? Do the same thing. Um, I do believe in al in alkalizing, mm -hmm. um, and I do uh, apple cider vinegar um, every morning, or I try to do it every morning um, yeah. when I remember it. Um, and then uh, you know or lemon water or something like that lemon does help great. alkalize and balance uh, balance out your body. So there's little things that you can add in mm -hmm. that you can that will definitely help your body get those same results without having to go through some crazy cleanse and detox stage. I mean, I've seen some of them for like seven day cleanse and detox. So bad. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just no reason to go to any extreme guys. And, uh, you know, just really learn to seek out those marketing terms. And when you hear those marketing terms, just have a little red or yellow flag go off in your mind. Anything that says quick, anything that says easy, the word cleanse, the word detox, those are all trigger words and they're all marketing and it's all meant to try and rope you in to get you in on some sort of product or some sort of, um, you know, website email list or something like that. Um, just be smarter, guys. But like Tyler said, those are all good things to incorporate into a normal diet. Um, you know, definitely you can pick and choose some things that you're going to take and make your own. But just anything extreme, guys, stay away from because the quicker you lose the weight, the quicker it's going to come back on. And the whole point of any diet is sustainability. We don't want to do something for seven days and then think that's going to last. It's just not going to happen. Um, next topic. If you guys have any other questions on these, reach out to us. Um, we'd be happy to go more into this. I'm sure uh, with the amount of products and stuff that are out there, you guys have more questions on this. So um, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, right now, um, take this next one. Tips for beginners. So tips for beginners. I had... Um a uh, buddy of mine messaged me and just kind of asked how, if you're a beginner and you're, you're trying to make some, you know, a life change, lifestyle change into this fitness industry and, and you have a goal that you want to get to, how do you get started? And uh, which is huge because there's so much information out there, so many different ways to get to your goal, so many different workouts and, mm -hmm. and diets and all this kind of stuff. And it's very hard to get consumed in a lot of different things and, and feel uh, lost, uh, I guess you Information say. overload. Information overload, exactly. So, um, I will just say that the, my recommendation for you would to be seek out consultation of a trainer of some sort. And I don't just say that because we're trainers. Um, literally, when I got started in this fitness industry, I was, I was lost as well. And I went and seeked out a trainer just to help me get on the right track because mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I didn't know the best way to get to where I wanted to be. So seek out help if it's not from a trainer, maybe some, you know, a friend who's, you know, been doing this for a while or something like that. But definitely seek out um, help because there's a lot of information out there and it's very easy to get consumed in, you know, the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, that's not saying that you obviously don't have to get a trainer and spend a bunch of money for years with a trainer, right? If you even were to just go say, Hey, I need a program to get me started. How do yep. I get started? Yep. Um, you know what you're doing, and you're just kind of going back and forth between programs and meal plans and all this kind of stuff. Most likely, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. Um, so you would rather I would rather you invest in a plan from the get go, so you mm -hmm. can at least get off on the right track, and then do some research on how to continue. And you you know if you're comfortable doing it on your own from there, um, then go for it. Um, but if, and if you continue to need help, then do, you can obviously get more help. So I, uh, I think, I think Tyler nailed it with uh, get professional guidance. Uh, I started lifting when I was 
like second semester of my junior. So I was like almost a senior in high school. So I, I didn't start till kind of late for a lot of guys. Um, and I, uh, you just got a lot of thumbs up there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I, uh, got me off track. It was a little distracting. <laughs> um, and I, looking back at it, you know, I was straight, I didn't have a trainer in the beginning and I was straight trial and error. I mean, forever. And I feel like, you know, I've been lifting for a solid, what, 12 years now. And I really feel like it has just started to click and I've really just started to learn really how to do it properly in the past four to five years. And I know that had I gotten a trainer back in the very beginning, like looking back at it, if I knew what I know now, I would have asked my mom and dad, like for graduation, like, hey, 10 sessions with a trainer would be awesome. Just to have someone to show me uh, really just the ins and outs of weight training and the little kind of nuances that a beginner isn't going to figure out until years and years down the road. And there are many, many, many little nuances to weight training, um, little mind tricks and just mind muscle connection things, which I had no concept, you know, uh, I had no conception. Maybe that's the wrong word. <laughs> uh, no idea about until, you know, five years ago. Um, so looking back on it, that'd be the one thing that I could change is I would have gotten a trainer from the very beginning, get 10 sessions with the trainer. If you don't have a lot of expendable cash, get 10 sessions with the trainer, get a program, learn the little nuances and stick with that. But most importantly, let's say you have no money. Um, you have no other resources, but you have the internet, right? Um, find a basic, what up, Mike? Find a basic, um, workout program from bodybuilding.com. It's going to be good. Um, Boom, boom, boom. Um, and uh, That's a good time. and then just start moving, guys. Um, if you're really overweight and uh, you know you feel like you're really going to put yourself at harm or at risk by going into a gym or a weight room and just winging it, just start walking, guys. Um, just moving. Our bodies are meant to move. You have to just get out there and move. So walking, get on the treadmill, put it at a side incline, and just walk 30 minutes a day. You're going to see weight loss from that. Cut out the obvious like sodas and crap like that. The obviously bad things you know you shouldn't be eating. Cut that stuff out. Walk for 30 minutes a day. You're going to see weight loss and results just from doing that. And then once you've done that for a couple of months and you've lost 20 pounds or so, then you can get online and find a program. Reach out to us. We give free advice and help people out all the time. Um, so use your resources between Google and Tyler and I. You guys are in good hands. Yep, um, all right, so alcohol and its effects on weight loss and building muscle. What do you think? Uh, I always tell I, I tell people stay away from alcohol as best as, as you can, no matter what it is. You know, a lot of people just say, "Well, I try to stay away from uh, from beer because it's got you know calories or anything like that." So I just stick to vodka. Guys, vodka is still alcohol. Just beer. Beer is not bad because it has calories and a beer is bad because it's it's alcohol so right alcohol whether it's vodka whether it's beer whether it's wine um you know i i tell people to stay away from it. and another thing i say is you know if you are a person who's trying to lose weight um alcohol is going to make it harder for you to lose weight if you are a, tr a person trying to build muscle alcohol is going to make it harder for you to build muscle however your body is genetically set up alcohol will make it difficult mm -hmm. for you to change whatever you're trying to change so Stay away from it as best as you can is, is my first and foremost advice. Yep. And, uh, you know, alcohol, guys, it's an, it's a substance unlike any other. So basically anything you can put into – anything you put into your body is comprised of either carbs, fats, or protein, right? Everything kind of breaks down into that. Alcohol is very unique in the sense that it doesn't fit any of those categories. It's in one all of its own. Even though it has carbohydrates in it, alcohol is a – you hear of empty calories, people usually think of like soda or chips or something like that. That's not true because you're actually getting nutrients from those calories. You're getting sugars and things like that. It may not be good, but it's actual nutrients. Alcohol doesn't contain any of that stuff. Alcohol is truly empty calories. So it's calories with zero nutritional benefit at all. Um, on top of that, alcohol has almost as many calories per gram as fat. If you're looking at protein and carbohydrates, this is getting a little technical for probably most of you guys, but it's still good to know. Carbohydrates and protein each have four calories per gram. So no matter what the protein is, no matter what the carbohydrate is, good or bad, um, good or bad, I'll put that in quotes, you're going to have four calories per gram. Fat has nine calories per gram. So no matter what kind of fat, um, 
calorie, fat has nine calories per gram. Alcohol has seven. That's almost as many calories per gram as fat. That's crazy to think about. Just like if you were to eat straight fat, almost as just a little more calories than actual alcohol. Um, the other interesting thing to know is that whenever you ingest alcohol, it takes priority in digestion over anything else that you're taking in. Yeah. So alcohol, because your body it realizes that it's a poison coming in and it's trying to metabolize it and get it out of the system as soon as possible, any other food or anything like that, you're not going to burn any fat. You're not going to utilize those calories. It's going to go like, and say you're eating bad stuff when you're drinking as well, right? We always do that, like Del Taco on the way home and Sonic and things like that. Um, right, Taco Bell. It's actually great when you're drunk. But um, what's going to happen is your body's going to say, all right, food, you need to go to fat because I need to focus on getting rid of this alcohol first. So alcohol gets like first position when it comes to digestion. So it's going to try and metabolize that. And that's why like the calories with the alcohol is just so bad. It lowers your inhibitions. You're going to screw up on your diet, I guarantee, especially if you have more than one drink. Um, now, if they're going to drink, because they are, what would be some good suggestions for them uh, to hit at the bar or whatever? Uh, the best, I, I mean, the best thing I would say would, would be, it was it vodka? So vodka? Yep. Tonic, whatever it is. Yep, yep. Um, not tonic. To uh, or not tonic. Vodka. What's the soda water? Clubs? Yeah, 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 soda water, whatever it is. Uh, clearly, I drink all the time. <laughs> um, but... I would say, I mean, that is your best bet. I would say, if yeah. you have to have a drink, make it a clear, a clear, clear vodka, something like that. Probably just take a shot of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, stay away from any mixers or anything like that that has you know the increased sugar in it, by all means. But um, if you're going to, uh, that's that's the best thing I would say to do. Yeah. So general rule of thumb: uh, clear liquor. Um, sugar-free mixture, so diet soda, um, like vodka, Red Bull is kind of my go-to. If I am drinking, again, which is rare, club soda, yep, thanks. Um, tonic is the one with, uh, with sugar in it. Um, it? Okay. yeah. They're um, all the same to me <laughs> So, uh, vodka, Red Bull, vodka, sugar-free Red Bull is kind of my go-to drink, or I'll just do a shot of tequila on the rocks with extra lime juice. Um, in a, generally in a shot of liquor, you're looking at anywhere from... Probably about 70 calories. Not probably. It's about 70 calories per shot. Um, again, it's Dude, just the alcohol is just bad, guys. But if you're going to drink, minimize the calories, but still understand that you're actually consuming alcohol. Um, now, here's another interesting fact. Um, after you drink, your body, your testosterone, your hormone levels, your protein synthesis, which is basically after you lift, your body wants to synthesize protein. So utilize protein that you take in to help build muscle. That's protein synthesis generally. That and your uh, testosterone levels can get reduced up to 23% up to 48 hours post drinking. Yep. So say you're drinking, you work out on Friday because you're going out to drink that night, right? So you drink that night. So you're limiting your protein synthesis and your metabolism, your hormones, you're reducing that 23% from that day. So that workout, you're not getting good results from. And then say you're hungover Saturday, so you're probably eating crap on Saturday. And then you're going to work out Sunday to try to work it off. Again, your hormones, your muscle protein synthesis is reduced almost by a quarter yep. um, for two days after. Yep. So think about that, guys, especially if you're drinking midweek. Um, if you drink twice a week, you're spending the majority of the week in a reduced hormonal state, a reduced muscle protein synthesis state, and maybe only getting one good workout day out of the week. And that's only drinking twice a week. So in general, guys, find something else to do. Um, or, you know, if you, I mean, if you guys are really trying to lose weight, you just, you can't drink. You know, set goals, set three month goals, set 12 weeks. You know, just pick, okay, for the next eight weeks, for the next 12 weeks, I'm just not gonna drink. Yep. Give yourself a reward afterwards, and then go right back on track, all right? Yep. Um, all right. And, uh, now a lot of people, uh, and this is out everywhere. You hear this a lot about, um, Ooh, ketogenic diet. Okay, cool. We'll hit that. Um, good carbs versus bad carbs, guys. Uh, Tyler, why don't you hit this buddy? Your carb good, master right good, now. Yeah. I know. Um, good carbs and bad carbs. I don't, I don't necessarily believe in good carbs and bad carbs. I think all carbs are just carbs. Um, now some foods have now unless unless it's full of sugar, then I'll say it's bad, right? Um, 
But as far I mean, so good carbs, we were talking about complex carbs versus, you know, you know, which are your sweet potatoes, your oatmeal, oatmeal, your, brown rice. your whole grains, yep. your your whole, you know, rice, quinoa, all that kind of stuff. Those are complex carbohydrates, guys. Those are gonna be the ones that don't mess with your um, insulin and blood sugar levels too much, that kind of keep you steady, give you a good source of energy. And, and those, when we say good carbs, those are, those are mainly what we're talking about. Carbs that aren't going to do this to your blood sugar levels and, and cause um, a bad insulin response mm -hmm. for you. Like um, now something with a lot of sugar in it, candy, soda, all that kind of stuff, spike your blood sugar, and then your blood sugar is going to crash and you're just going to feel terrible and not only that it messes with your leptin levels your ghrelin levels which are your um, hormones that can that tell you when you're hungry or not and when you're full or not so mm -hmm. if those are doing you know adverse effects on what they're supposed to be doing well and you're just gonna feel like you're starving when you shouldn't be eating and you're gonna feel like you need to be eating more when you really shouldn't so um, there's a ton of stuff that goes into the ups and downs with with those high sugar carbs and mm -hmm. um Go ahead. <laughs> That's what I was uh, okay, so all this, I'll tack on the back of that because uh, everything you said, I agree with. Um, you know, whenever we hear good and bad carbs, basically, we learned the rule. I talked about it earlier. Any gram of carbohydrate, whether it's a gram of pure sugar or it's a gram of brown rice or oatmeal, is going to have the same calories per gram, right? Um, so I'm not too big on good carbs versus bad carbs. I always choose white rice over brown. Um, however, I think that um, if we are trying to reduce our insulin response in our body, so we don't want our body, when we eat plain sugar, like fruit, uh, that a lot of people just think fruit is instantly good, it's, again, it's pure sugar, guys. Now, of course, it's a natural sugar, but really, it, you know, it does get digested quickly in your body, but the quicker it gets digested, the more insulin is released in your body because your blood sugar goes up. The more sugar in there, like in fruit, your blood sugar is going to go up. Your body has to release insulin to mitigate that. The more insulin that gets released, the more prone your body is to fat storage. Um, it's a it's a fat storage signal for your body. So if you guys are eating fruit, um, again, there's a lot of good vitamins and mineral and nutrients in there. Uh, we all know that, but I would try and time it post workout. Um, fruits and sugars are things you have to earn. And it's pure energy, therefore you have to expel energy in order to earn that. That goes for carbohydrates in general. So, um, you know, when it comes to carbohydrates, guys, the good, the bad, I don't really, you know, it's a fine line. I don't really think it exists. It's a gray area. Um, but uh, whenever you're ingesting any sort of carbohydrate, just make sure you've earned it, especially if you're overweight. If you're not working hard in the gym, you just don't need carbohydrates. Your body will function easily on proteins and vegetables and some fats in there. Um, work the carbohydrates into your diet based on your energy expenditure. Just make sure it's something you have to earn. Fruit or not, you know, try and just limit the amount of carbohydrates. Make sure you earn it. Um, there's something else I wanted to hit on with this and I totally forgot. Oh, okay, so if you guys are taking in um, simple carbohydrates like fruit, white rice, uh, sweet or white potatoes, things like that, you will be able to minimize the insulin response based on what you eat or digest with those carbohydrates. Yeah. So if you're eating sugars or simple carbs, make sure you're getting protein and fiber in there. So that's going to be like what? Your vegetables sure, with yeah. your rice. Yep. Um, vegetables. And the more, and, and so I guess... The more complex carb you go, the more fiber that's naturally in there. So, yep. you know, your sweet potatoes, your brown rice, all that kind of stuff, they, they will have more natural fiber in them. Um, and I do um, a fiber supplement. I add in Metamucil, um, which I'm sure people are familiar with. But mm -hmm. uh, just to, you know, get that extra fiber in there, that's just pure fiber. Um, but I just, I add that in, you know, doesn't hurt anything. But yeah, your, your vegetables... Are definitely going to have a high um, fiber nutrient and nutrient source that are going to help um, mediate that your um, blood sugar levels uh, by all means. So make sure that you're adding and then protein and healthy fats as well slow yep. down the digestion yep. of those carbohydrates, right? So if you were to just have, you know, just a piece of fruit or just you know some candy or something like that, well, it's just going to throw your body for a loop. But yep. if you were to have you know your fruit with 
some kind of protein and fat source, well, the digestion of that carbohydrate of that fructose will be slowed down and won't have quite the effect on your body as it would if you were to eat it by yourself. Yep, yep. So just make sure that you're not taking in those sugars by themselves. Protein and fiber and some fats will definitely help level the playing field between good and bad carbs. Um, and but I hate brown rice. Ugh. White so. rice is so much Fun better. Fun fact for rice for you guys, a lot of people think you either have to go white rice or brown rice. Honestly, go the longer the grain rice, the better it is for you. The shorter it is, the you know more it'll have um, the higher on the uh, a glycemic index. Glycemic index, yep. it will be. So instead of focusing brown versus white, focus long versus short. Um, so uh, jasmine rice, which is a white rice, basmati, which is a white rice, they're long, basmati they're rice. long grain, yeah, and they don't have the same effect as a short grain rice does on you. So yep. Yep. fun fact for you guys. There you go. That is a fun fact. <laughs> Um, uh, I, uh, you any questions on there? I think that's pro. Oh, Just ketogenic diet. One. Okay. Um, let me hit this one. Um, I don't know how to say your name. Um, pretty name though. Um, is Amara. I'm totally sorry if I butchered your name. You'll have to <laughs> tell me how to pronounce that. All right. So, um, she's asking you about the ketogenic diet. Now, basically for those of you that don't know, um, the ketogenic diet, or you'll oftentimes hear it referred to as just keto, uh, K E T O keto. Um, I love the ketogenic, well, I love to hate the ketogenic diet. Um, I love it because it works really well. Uh, I love it because I have a lot of energy when I'm doing it and I lose fat very easily when I'm doing it. However, I hate it because I love carbohydrates so much and like just like a bowl of oatmeal or some pancakes, like my favorite thing in the world. Um, so if I didn't like carbs so much, I would do keto much more um, because it is so effective. Uh, for those of you, I mean, and it is, it's really, it's sustainable. If you can just get used to not eating the carbohydrates, it really is sustainable with a few different modifications to your daily diet, uh, mostly increasing fats because you really have to try to eat a lot of fats, so avocados, uh, real bacon, real butter, things like that. Uh, you feel satiated. So you actually get to eat good food. You feel full, you eat whole eggs, um, for me also what's hard about the diet is the minimum amount of protein you have to take in. Um, a real ketogenic diet will have very high fats, moderate protein, and no carbohydrates outside of vegetables, right? Yep. Um, the problem with eating too much protein, which I'm also a protein fiend, is your protein can actually, in lack, and if you lack the presence of carbohydrates in your diet, your body, this is another little fun fact, your body will take protein, convert it into carbohydrates. So excessive protein and convert into carbohydrates. So if you're trying to do keto and you're taking in too much protein because your carbs are so low, your body will take the protein and do its little magic King Midas thing and turn it into a carbohydrate. Um, so you can't take in too much protein, which is also another kind of downside to it because I love protein. Yep. Um, what have your experiences been with it? Uh, same thing. Extremely useful when it comes to uh, fat loss. Um, I personally would never do it um, if I'm trying to put size on. Um, because that's just kind of my yep. body type. Yep. I have to eat a ton, a ton of carbs to put size on me. But you know, as far as fat loss goes, the the purpose of the ketogenic diet is to convert your body's use of energy from carbohydrates to your fat stores. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very useful as far as the fat burning process goes. Any other time, I wouldn't really recommend it. Um, and it's also is a um, you know as Eli was talking about he loves carbs. A lot of people love carbs. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a hard um, diet to stick to for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's, you're going out, you know, you have to, you can't really go out with your friends or family or anything like that unless you want to go to a restaurant and order a chicken breast and vegetables. Um, I guess, in other words, it's not very fun. Yeah. <laughs> and a diet that's hard for people to stick to and then people can't really enjoy all the things that they like is definitely going to be harder for you to stick to long term. So, if you wanted to try, you know, the ketogenic diet and lose a little bit of fat. Um, I also, I mean, I use with some clients, I do, you know, have them do keto during the week while they're at work all week and they, you know, they're just kind of in their routine and it's very yeah. easy for them to not crave carbs or anything like that. And then on the weekend, I let them have their carbs. So it's kind of, I, I kind of use it as a carb cycle, I guess you could yeah. say, yeah. Um, which is another way that you could use that to your benefit because um, carb cycling also has a great fat loss effect. Uh, but um, ketogen I mean, as a whole, ketogenic is great. I like ketogenic. I like what it does to the body. Um, long term, I don't think it's a very 
very sustainable, sustainable yeah. uh, meal plan. I think when he said carb cycling, guys, I think carb cycling is a great intermediate tool. If you're wanting to lose weight, but you're not wanting to go fully ketogenic, um, carb cycling is excellent. So carb cycling um, basically is adjusting your carbohydrate intake during the week, adjusting to your energy levels. Um, look at it this way. Here's, here's, here's why I think a lot of people gain fat off of carbohydrates. Um, or think they gain fat off of carbohydrates. Zeke, by the way, man, I put all these on my YouTube channel, man. So if you uh, want to watch this down the road, it will be saved on my Facebook wall. But also, um, I'll send you a link to my YouTube channel and you can catch it on there also. Uh, thanks for watching, dude. Um, so uh, carb cycling. Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> I lost my, totally lost my train tool. of thought. It's a good mediator. Um, like said. Yeah, yeah. So That's if awesome. you guys are um, thinking about carb cycling... Um, Okay, uh, my analogy. Okay, that's where I was going with this. I had a good analogy for this. I love analogies. So uh, look at it this way. You're driving home from work, right? And we put gas in our car for fuel. So we, you notice your tank is running empty on the way home from work. You stop by the gas station. You fill it up with gas. You drive home. You park it in your garage. It sits there all night. Now, filling that car up with gas is equivalent to you um, eating carbohydrates. It's energy. It's fuel. So your car sits in your garage all night. Now it's you wake up in the morning, time to go to work, right? So you get in your car and you drive to the gas station. Try putting more fuel in it. This is your your carbohydrates in the morning, your oatmeal after you had your you know pasta last night. Um, you go, you go to put more gas in the tank. Your tank's already full. It just sat in your garage all night. You didn't use any. What's going to happen? It's going to overflow and spill out of the tank, right? That overflow, that spillage is literally the exact same thing that happens with carbohydrate stores in your body. Your body is going to go to put it into your energy and it's going to say, hey, these stores are already full. Let's save this for later as fat. Okay, fat storage, fat fuel, save it as fat, which is fuel for a later date, right? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. So what happens, guys, is you keep trying to put gas in your car, but you're not burning off the fuel. You're not going anywhere. Um, now, if you were going up to the mountains, you're, you're going to have a hard workout. You know you're going to use that fuel. Yeah, fill it up. You're going to need it and you're going to burn it up as you're going. But the majority of people out there are filling their tank, filling their tank, filling their tank, and the filling their tank, and you're just spilling out, guys. Like it's spilling out into fast storage. So yeah. um, that's one of my favorite analogies. It really, like, that's that's what it is, guys. Carbohydrates are energy. Um Primarily, I'm referring to the people that are overweight, which the majority of people are out there. Stick to your proteins, stick to your fats, make sure you're getting fats in your diet. Carbohydrates, I mean, use them as needed. Use them as needed. I like to I like to tell people to use, put your carbohydrates around closest to your workout yep. for the day. So before your workout, for fuel during your workout, you can have um, an, an intra workout uh, shake or something with carbs in it. Uh, and then post-workout when your body needs it to recover what you just uh, did through the workout. So if you can manage to keep majority of your carbs around your workout, you'll be in a much better place than than having them all day long yep. when your body's earn not em. really you gotta earn um, used for them. Um, Good question. Mara, right there. Three months, I lost 50 pounds. Congratulations. That's yeah. amazing. Good so this, job. this girl's been on her ketogenic diet for three months. She lost 50 pounds. Yeah, high five for real. Um, she wants to know if she should stop. Um, I, if you are still getting results and you feel okay, I would say keep going. Um, as soon as, if you are doing the ketogenic diet and you stop seeing results or you start to feel bad, I don't I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. um, then I would say it's time to switch stuff up. But if you're still, if you're still cruising along, you feel good, you feel energized, um, you know, you're not craving anything, then um, I would say keep going with it. You're doing a great job with it so far. So congratulations. Nailed it. Yeah, he nailed it. If your energy is good, you're losing weight. 50 pounds is incredible in three months. Um, yeah, if you're feeling good, keep going with that. Um, whenever, like he said, you'll notice when you start feeling just not good. Maybe you start getting sick. Um, you start feeling for a week or two weeks in a row just brain foggy, low energy, just not right. You know, you know your body. Um, hopefully you do if you don't start listening to it. Um, if you start feeling at that point, then what I would do is go into a carb cycle. Don't just jump into like doing carbohydrates, but maybe have one or two days during the week that you have higher carbohydrates than normal. Um, keep it minimal though, like 50 to probably 100 grams max, at least just starting off. Yeah. 
um, because you need to reintroduce us slowly to your body. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I'm going to throw one thing in there. Reverse effect, right? If you, if you, now myself, when I'm trying to put on size, I have to eat a ton of carbs, 400 plus grams of carbs a day, God, which is a lot. lot. Um, and there will be times, you know, so on one end of the spectrum with the ketogen diet where you can start feeling terrible because your body is, you know, it's, it's time for a change. Mm-hmm. The same thing can happen if you're eating too many carbs. And it happens to myself. Yeah. I'll, I will get to a point where I am just tired all day, don't want to work out, which I know when I don't want to work out, that's when it's time for me to change something because yeah. that just can't happen. But, um, I, you know, and there, there will get to a point to where I just feel, I, I don't feel good. I want to sleep. I don't feel good. I don't feel myself. I don't feel energized. And in that case, I will actually I back off my carbs. I will literally go to a ketogenic diet with, you know, 50 grams or less of mm-hmm. accidental carbs, meaning carbs I get from stuff like an avocado or nuts that have carbs in it, but it's not really a carb. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, pay attention, no matter what you're doing, paying attention to how you're feeling. If you are having too many carbs, you will eventually feel bad and you might have to back off the carbs a little bit to kind of give your body uh, a reset um, and vice versa. If you're on the ketogenic diet and you start feeling bad, uh, you might have to start reintroducing carbs. So just always pay attention to how your how your body's responding. If you start, you know, losing strength in the gym is a great sign. If you start, you know, losing motivation is another mm-hmm. great sign. Feeling sleepy all day, mm-hmm. another sign. Just pay attention, guys. So many problems can be resolved with just adjusting your diet, guys. Everyone turns to either more caffeine or fat burners or a cleanse or a detox or medication or antidepressants or some crap like that. I swear 90% of these issues just need to be adjustments in your diet. Just doing something that your body isn't accustomed to doing. You've been too much of anything over a prolonged period of time just isn't good. Exercise included. Um, for real, like there's, there's cycles, there's, th- you know, phases we need to go through. You look at the world, you look at the universe, everything is on cycles of, uh, feast and famine, growth and death. You know, we all have to go through the cycles, bulk and a cut. Um, everything is cycles, guys. You can't just go, 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 go on any one thing all the time. Your okay. Body will burn out. Yeah. Yeah. You have to cycle. Cycle of life, guys. That's how it goes. Um, um, Kim, uh, yeah. As soon as this video is done, I'll, I'll uh, save this and this will be posted and it'll just be on my wall. You can go through and watch yep. uh, from the beginning. So. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. Anything else you wanna add? Um, I don't think that's good. Did we cover everything. I think so. Yeah, we did. Uh, next Monday, six p.m., guys. We'll be here every week. Um, yeah. So far, we've been pretty consistent with this, and we're getting more and more people reach out to us for questions and topics that they want us to cover. Absolutely. Share these videos with your friends. Um, have your friends send us a, a friend request so that they can watch these as well. Um, these will be saved to our wall every week. Um, I put them on my YouTube channel. Um, I need to start putting them on mine. Yep, yep. He'll put them on his yeah, and. On. Uh, That's it, guys. Give us your questions. Um, We're happy to help you out if you guys have any questions. In the meantime, what's up, Melissa? This will be posted in like two minutes, so just watch it. (laughs) Sorry, I got it at the end. I know. A lot of – I get – after last week, actually, each week I get more and more questions from you guys after these videos are done, which is awesome. I love it. Um, And I know a lot of you are are getting started with all this kind of stuff. Just got a trainer, just, you know, Mm -hmm. are doing all this kind of stuff. So – any question that you have, any co- topic that you want us to cover, please share it. We love yeah, it. We, yeah. we do this. We do this for you guys. So yep. we don't want to just run. We can just talk about this all day. So <laughs> we want to help you guys. Whatever you guys want to know, learn about, whatever. Let us know. Cool. All right. Love you guys. Cool. Take See, care. See you guys. Peace. Later. Where's my finish? Oh. <laughs>